Today's video is sponsored by our good friends at Famous Faces and Funnies, located in Melbourne, Florida. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter on the link below, as well as Docking Bay 94, located in Boca Raton, Florida. Check us out on comicsandgames.com. And Ian's Display Accessory, the best figure stands for your iconic Kenner Star Wars and Hasbro G.I. Joe figures as well as modern figures, shipping nationwide, and EGS Expert Grading Services, the Gen X preferred place to get your comics graded and encased. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Codename New to Vero 2. Hi, I'm your presenter, Shabu Are You? Well, it's no surprise, I'm really far behind on my comic book recaps. And my regulars know that because I live in Florida and I am always used to, whether it be family members, in-laws, cousins, second cousins, coming down to visit us after dealing with all the tourist crazy Orlando Disney nonsense. But, um... Finally, I got to see my mom because um, of the COVID situation. She actually is a director of nursing up in the north. So between her job and the COVID pandemic, it's been quite a while. So, you know, uh, that's one thing all of this has taught us is to cherish the time we have on this earth, cherish the people that we love. And there's no better time than the present. To, so it's not worth putting things off or what have you. Anyway... Yeah, because of the situation that I haven't um, done any comic recaps, this is a great opportunity. I recently visited our sponsors, two of the sponsors I mentioned at the beginning of each episode. Famous Faces and Funnies located in Melbourne, Florida. Now, why it's advantageous for you, even if you live you know, on the other side of the country, is because Famous Faces has special Facebook online auctions that they do. Whether it be for back issues and comics, graphic novels, or action figures. Right now, currently, they have a set of Castle Grayskull and Snake Mountain, and um, what's that airplane that is attached to Grayskull that looks like a, a falcon? Well, they have that, the whole setup there. And so far, it's been there for two months, and um, you know, probably the person that really is eyeing that and needing that may live in, you know, the state of Washington. So it's a great opportunity to find deals. Um, and because it's Florida, you know, all these old folks, they bring Junior and uh, Little Miss all their belongings down here with them when they retire. And then they realize that they have to get rid of it because there's not enough space. So... If you haven't tapped into our Florida market, give it a chance and Famous Faces will bring you great service and shipping is nationwide. Also, Docking Bay 94, our other sponsor located in Boca Raton, Florida. Now, John, the owner there, has a wonderful online service where you can order your comics, have them sent to you. You actually get to pick what cover. I mean, it's a wonderful uh, database that he has and in the day and age where, like, you know, we should have that. Um, sometimes in comic shops, you just get what variant they give you. If you say, hey, pick out X-Men, you'll get the first cover. That's it. No bells and whistles. But with Docking Bay, you have that option. So make sure you click on their link and give them a try. And remember, like, let them know that you're a viewer and follower of this channel and you'll get special discounts. All right, so... I'm going to use this opportunity on camera to showcase a few things. Number one, I've been talking about getting comics graded and in case. And there's a reason why I've been talking about that is because I'm actually adding pieces to the retro room here. So I'm going to give you a preview of what I'm uh, setting up. So this place is like you can't see, it, but it's a freaking mess. I always take things down and put things back up and reorganize the retro room so you know visitors that come multiple times get something new so let's take a look at what setup i'm referring to as gen xers more so than these teeny bopper kids that are trying to buy and sell comics and slabs as a commodity 
uh, for investment opportunities, um, which, you know, I'm not downplaying it, but for the majority of books, especially us in this age bracket, this is what we kind of want to do with our books. So when we have guests over, we could be like, hey, G.I. Joe number one. So anyway, um, that's what I'm going to do. The second part of this video is I'm going to showcase the books that both Docking Bay 94 and Famous Faces set aside for me. Some are new, some are back issues. But this is a chance for you to also look what I'm looking at. And maybe this will spark an interest in something for you. Because getting back into comics in this age group is kind of fun. You know, there's no pressure or whatever. You just get to explore things. And if I'm sweating on the camera, it's because it is hot in here. I have all these freaking lights. So bear with me. We're going to have a shitload of fun. It's Friday night. And a lot of us are married, so we're not going to the bar or anything like that. So what better place than to join me and have a little fun here? All right, so let's begin. Well, longtime viewers of my channel should be familiar with what they see in the background as far as when I, I do all, most of my filming in this room. Um, it's my study. So um, naturally, I have my wife has been kind enough to designate one room in the house to this and she actually encourages this so I'm really lucky to have a wife that is supportive and just you know give, gave me a room to decorate <laughs> anyway so what I did here is this is my modern figure section and mostly they're the female um, I've you know I've always said that I'm you know the vintage era guy but when it comes to modern series I've actually targeted female mostly female modern figures because you know, the vintage era, there were so few female characters that um, I said, hey, you know, th this is a great opportunity to do that. So here we go. Um, this is my whole rooms are sectioned off. So you'll see like uh, you know, I took some things down. So it's kind of messy here. So just bear with me. So the G.I. Joe section is split. So, you know, I did an episode where I made shelves. So that's where all the Moray, the the Night Raven, and uh, various Cobra vehicles and personnel are on this side. And then I did the same thing with G.I. Joe on the other side. You know, you got the whale, the the flat, the uh, the towers, and then uh, the Mobats back there. So, um, oh yeah, there's uh, <laughs> Sergeant Slaughter's TT tank, and then. Uh, so what I'm kind of doing is using the um, comics that I got graded as pictures. And I'm using this uh, command. Let me get it. So using these command strips, I think are pretty cool because it won't damage the wall. You're not putting nails and you're not damaging the, um, the encasing, whatever. So it's just a matter of peeling it out and uh, you know the cool thing is I could change this so if I want to change other books I have that freedom to do that and I'm going to be featuring these books in that big um, EGS grading episode we're going to look at all the grading companies CGC um, PGX and EGS because I know a lot of people and I'm surprised I'm glad a lot of people have been reaching out to me asking me questions about um, all of this because it's it is new to us um, Gen Xers like these modern comic kids are like uh, they're kind of silly in their approach they're pushing just one brand at CGC and we all know from modern day economics putting all your eggs in one basket is not a recipe for success you know if that company folds everyone's going to get screwed in the long run so it's best to have different grading services to be not to be the standard versus one company being the standard. So that's my um, campaign, so to speak. And I like EGS books. I mean, uh, I'll talk more about in that episode, but this is the Death of Snake Eyes. The second print is actually the one that's to be sought after. And this cover is unique for that. So um, that's why I did that. And if you see, uh, again, I'll showcase this, the G.I. Joe issue number 22. The first time, this is the first camo label offered. So that is something to behold right there. And of course, my 
signed Larry Hama, issue number uh, 212, again, part of the, that the Snake Eyes um, four-issue arc. So I thought that's appropriate to have the man, the legend himself, right back there. So a lot of things I've taken down, but uh, no, just fixing. But if you could see, I'm using a lot of the comics I got graded as pictures, you know, or, you know, picture frames. So it kind of makes your displays pop a little bit more. You know, um, I have a Transformers section, so I have the first issue of Transformers there. And I do have a He-Man, so I'll probably put He-Man issue number one um, up there as well. So, you know, that's for as that goes. And again, uh, this is where all <laughs> I do my auditing work at this desk. But we're going to go through some of the comics um, that I picked up. And I think that might be... Uh, and this is uh, the Snake Supreme Cobra Commander from the last video. Still here. <laughs> and also, you know, thanks to Mark, a, a fellow G.I. Joe, YouTube, not YouTuber, but he's part of one of the Facebook uh, groups. And I didn't realize that he lived in the town next door to me. So he was able to pick up an extra Zartan and hook me up. And that's what this community is all about just people looking out for one another from different backgrounds all this stuff but the common thing is gi joe and uh, zartan itself isn't the win in this situation it's meeting someone else a fellow fan that's right next door to talk joe's and i think that's freaking awesome so thank you to mark all right so let's look at the comics that were provided by Famous Faces and Funnies, as well as Docking Bay. But this is basically to show you what I'm doing, and you may be interested in doing the same thing in your room, and that's why I'm doing this, is to show you how I went about doing this. I'm doing basically all the work for you, so you could select the grading company that best suits your needs. So all right, without further ado, let's go and look into the comics. All right, so for this next segment, I decided to film out in my kitchen just because of uh, the lighting and it's a lot cooler out here than in the retro room because I have like three laptops and lighting and stuff. It's just like an oven in there. So I think it was, so I don't pass out. I film out here. Anyway, so let's start. And again, there's no particular order. There's going to be a mixture of modern new comics as well as back issues. And this is why it's important to <clears throat> kind of like build that relationship with your local comic shop because who better to know you than them you know especially when you're a regular valued customer because um instead of like you know subscribing to services where they mail you random books just go to you and support your local comic shop you know it's the money goes into the community and stays in the community so that's what this is all about all right so let's begin the first one, again, another episode that I've been promising is a look at the Larry Hama Iron Fist series. This is issue number four. So I'm going to do a entire recap of one through four. And Larry's return to Marvel is monumental. I mean, if it, and I've said it in previous episodes, uh, there would be no McFarlane's, no Lee's, no Liefeld without... Larry Hama, G.I. Joe, Marvel. That three right there, you know. So for Larry to go back to Marvel and the twilight of his career to work on this book, I think is great. It's great for comics as a whole to have a living legend. And part of the reason why I started doing all this is because I was shocked how little respect and reverence these modern comic people have towards Larry Hama. And uh, that's a crime in itself. Um, and everyone will think about his G.I. Joe run, and that's great. But again, I've said it in other issues, his Wolverine run and his Punisher Warzone, as well as other countless books. I know he did a Batman issue once, believe it or not. But to appreciate him as a writer and give him the proper respect prior to his retirement, I think is my personal 
uh, crusade in all of this. So I hope you do like and subscribe to this channel and support me in getting Larry Hama acknowledged. It's a totally selfless reason to do this. So anyway, this is issue number four, and we're continuing with the, I think, a, it's something with the dragon in it. But it, so far, I've read issue one and two, and it's really good. Um, and I don't know nothing about the character Iron Fist. Uh, he wasn't in my wheelhouse as a kid, but because of Shang-Chi and all, you know, and Doctor Strange, I think this is a great opportunity to learn more about this character. So stay tuned for that episode as we look at Iron Fist 1 through 4. And since we're on Larry Hammond and an upcoming episode, we're going to look at issue 279. And wow, right off the bat, the artwork is phenomenal. I think this is John Royal. It has to be Royal's artwork. But uh, if you've been following regularly, you know I've become friends with a lot of the artists that work on G.I. Joe. And man, the Conquest, I mean, it's a, I'll show you when I recap that issue. It's front and back. So it's just a beautiful layout. I, I, was, I was targeting cover A for this. So I'm so glad I have this and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you in another upcoming episode of Codename New TV Room 2. The other book I got was Amazing Spider-Man 328. And um, since I have a finger on what modern comics is going on, besides our little, you know, um, rabbit hole in G.I. Joe, which I bring to all of you, uh, I've been noticing a lot of new trends. And the comic, today's comic world is vastly different from the one that we left in the 80s and early 90s for me. Um, but I've been targeting McFarlane uh, covers, whether it's The Amazing Spider-Man or The Regular Spider-Man um, recently. So this is another side project is to get re... I mean, I, I remember having so many of these issues and then I don't know what the hell happened to them. Probably this same story all, uh, many of you out there probably can relate to. What the hell happened to my books? Because I end up retaining a good portion of them, but they're still... Uh, quite a few of them that I, I have never been able to find. I don't know if my parents threw them out or something happened, but um, that sucks. So, because God, I knew I had Spider-Man 300 and that book is going for like a thousand bucks right now. So it's amazing. So I targeted this one because there's that Wolverine and Hulk iconic uh, McFarlane cover of, you know, where Wolverine, I should have it here, uh, you know, Wolverine has, you could see the Hulk's reflection through the Animantium, and that is a badass cover. And I thought this was another one, and I'm sure that once I get this uh, graded in case, that it's going to be, again, I'm not doing this for monetary reasons, but it's one of those covers that I think deserves to be in case. So, um, yeah, that's, and uh, I send a whole bunch of McFarlane covers to get graded through, uh, EGS gradings and PGX. I utilize both services, but um, yeah, that's going to be cool to get that back. All right, the next one, again, it's part of my, uh, you know, I, I, I did the Elvira recap. I did Vampirella, you know, all these femme fatale type of story arcs because I just find them interesting, you know. Um, they're not the typical, you know, Batman, Superman, stuff like that. So these are kind of like different. And the artwork is phenomenal. They're less, I mean, I'm not hiding it. It's just, it's, it's, I think it's beautiful. So uh, this is the new Lady Death. And um, I love the artwork. I mean, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's going to be a new story. And if you, um, I looked at the other Lady Death and it was pretty interesting. So this is all new to me. And I'm just the discovering, you know, Lady Death, what she's about, her history, and seeing if it's of interest. So um, that's something I'll probably look at in an upcoming episode as well. 